Two and a half balls. Oh, okay, well, you d you have to be with somebody all the time when you isolate yourself. Is that true or not? You're I'm not... I'm usually alone most of the time. Cause oh. I, to reiterate, as I told you before, my partner's usually gone about 75% of the time. Do you rather have him sleep with you every night? Because it's ninth houses in Taurus. So you value somebody in your bed and before you go to sleep. You eat before you go to sleep with or something. And then when you wake up, you become chaotic and... uh desirable and sexy when everyone when every time you wake up you, people probably think you're more sexier than when you were going to bed <laughs> you're more like chill when you go to bed well obviously who doesn't i don't know because your ninth house is in taurus i'm confused this is are you using one sex in the morning that's right are you using sex on the show jim are you awake i am now so you have mostly have sex in the morning <laughs> wow because your third no, house it doesn't matter just use it when he wants it's in the morning Oh, when he's a Gemini. Well, there you go. Third house Scorpio, so he probably thinks you're sexier in the morning. And then your C-Russ is in Leo, so you put everybody in the spotlight, and everyone treats you like a narcissist, but you treat everyone else like a narcissist, too. You you make them feel like they are important in the spotlight, and you make them feel like they're loved or something, and they want to be near your light. To, they come to you to heal them through the spotlight that you give them. And the expression that you let them have and they make around you and the creativeness that you bring. And it's like when you walk into a room that's supposed to be all serious, like as in court and shit, you become everybody's friend. Everyone sees you as a friend. They don't see you as this theater the door to figure it. Only when they meet you at surface value, like when you're initiating yourself, like you know, shaking hands or some bullshit kind of thing, acquainting yourself, it's different. People, you come off as intimidating and powerful, but secret. And also, when you do, when they, when you heal people, you heal them with your light. Does that make sense for you? Somewhat. And you always have to heal yourself is what something, like who you are, you don't know who you are, but once you know who you are, you have to heal yourself and find out who you are again and again and again. Is that true? Because you just like, <laughs> and then all these Pisces people come around you and they just become a chameleon. They want to act like you when they're around you. They try to adopt your behavior. Is that true? People try to adopt your behavior? Yes. That's crazy. Your Juno is in Libra. Your Visa is in Pisces. That's good. Pallas is in Taurus. Oh, 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 oh. Pallas in Taurus. Do you like decorating food? Do you like cooking? Hmm. I'm definitely a great cook. Definitely much a homemaker. That's me. Palaces and Taurus. You have a creative way of making food, bitch. In your projects like that. Wow. How you decorate your house? Let's see. I don't know what your palace sign is in the house, but... My friends tell me I should open up a restaurant because I'm a great cook. And some friends tell me, Jimmy, you should have been an interior decorator. Your home is always beautiful. Oh, wow. It says so. You would have a beautiful bedroom and stuff too. Yeah, mm, that's what it means to me. It's not saying anything to me. I'm just, I'm just making this up in my head about what your chart means to what I see, I guess. <laughs> your Uranus is in the second house. Okay, then. All right. All right. It's like you become normal. Um. Neptune's in the third house. Jupiter is in the... So how are you doing this? Reading cards or something? Hell fucking no. Cards are fake as shit. And I don't give a fuck what anyone says. That's just dumb. Anyways, one... That's like reading a story. Like a fortune cookie is fake. But whatever. It gets you in tune. Yeah. So what's my future going to be like? Uh, this doesn't tell the future, but the Aquarius is your purpose is if you, you be the futuristic and around parties and get togethers and holidays and being the center of everyone is your fucking point of your dumbass existence and that's what you came here to be is in the center of the fucking universe and in your career. Motherfucker, and be well known as that shit. That's your purpose, is what it is. That's it. And to be friends with everyone, and to be knowing everything. You gotta gain your knowledge. You're already getting used to getting all the fucking attention, but now it's turn, your turn to know all the knowledge and get attention for it. And your reputation. Probably your career. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Probably. You might die of a car wreck. That is serious. Try not to spend too much money while you're spending other people's money. You're spending other people's money. For yourself. Is that true? Because your 8th house is other people's money and your Aries is yourself. That clicks no, with you. No, 
Um, we have a joint bank account, but he has his own separate account, so do I. Mm-hmm. But, um, I only spend money for both of us for our home, but mm-hmm. I, I'm always buying him something or buying me something. I do spend a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It's in your eighth house, so you spend it without thinking. But what about driving? Do you drive? Don't drive ever again. It could give you the opportunity. I don't mind. used to, but it might. Um, I don't because I'm metro accessible. to ride to work, the subway, everything, so I can actually sit out my front of my building. Awesome. Keep cautious of that. And your lungs, too. And your arms and your hands. Okay. Okay. And also your belief system. Being in the view of God is um, with the relationship with others. Like, you want to bring people to church with you, or your dad was overly churchy, and... You found your relationships in church or something, and is that true or false? Fuck, you're your learning buddies. No. Okay, well, fuck no. it. okay, fuck it. <laughs> I'm stupid. I don't know. I, I'm so, I'm, I believe I believe that you don't have to go to a man-made structure to speak to God. God's me with me every day. I, 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 I talk to him before I go to sleep, and I talk to him during the day. Okay, sure. I know that I have two guardian angels. One is my mother. One's my gra- The other one's my grandmother. What? Did you ever see them in real life and communicate with them? Because ain't nobody here in your tent of angels. I've seen them in dreams. Really, your ninth house is inside Taurus. The view of God. When you go to dream, when you do fall asleep. Hmm. And Saturn is Gemini's there. Communicate the bridge of communication when you go to sleep. I guess that's why you have those dreams, buddy. And then you wake up like, I'm the devil. I came from hell and I am... Here to be desired and um, speak with power and think about other people's money or some bullshit. <laughs> no. I don't know. That's some storytelling bullshit of its own. This is just like reading a fucking dumb tarot card, fake ass bullshit. But I love when people put astrology in it. It sounds groovy. I don't know. You? I'm 35, but 53 backwards. Oh my goodness. Mm hmm. Anyways, seven, but I look like I'm about thirty-five. Uh wow! You are supposed to look very pretty in this. It says, "Plus a Virgo rising would be pretty." Yeah. My partner always tells me I'm pretty. He always tells me that Jim, you're too pretty for your pretty for your own good. Your Pluto. And what does that mean? He yeah. Says, your Pluto. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's always giving me that, but Capricorn would be the total opposite. See, my partner looks like a younger Bruce Willis. Hmm. Funny, and he is a Gemini, you say. Okay, we do his chart too and see what his chart says about him and your synchronicity. You recorded. Okay, okay. You are a Capricorn in the sixth, no, uh, fifth, sixth, uh, no. You're the fourth house. You're a son in Capricorn in the fourth house. Sagittarius, which is your fourth house, is uh, ruled by ca- uh, Cancer. It's a polarity of Capricorn anyway, so you're in the house of that. Your ego is in the polarity of yourself. Okay, whatever. Your moon is in Libra, which means you probably had a fake beautiful mom, and she made you feel beautiful and, it, and treated you like an inanimate object, but it was in the t- rising sign, which is yours is in Virgo, and also you have Pluto, in Libra in the first house too. So you might come off as this person. Okay, your rising sun is in Virgo. So you look like a Virgo. You're going to attract a lot of seventh house Pisces people. The seventh house is ruled by Libra. It is a balance, scales. It is your shadow self. It's a self of you that you think is so different from yourself and that you're not like that. You think those people who are attract, attract to you, you think they're way different from you and you and you might not like them. So you might not like Pisces. I'm a Pisces in the Cusco Aquarius. And then you might, you might attract a lot of fucking delusional people or spiritual people or drug addict people or just sad, miserable people that just come to you and you're like, I'm nothing like that. I'm just like perfect and stuff or something. I don't know, but your 10th house is in Gemini, which, and your fourth house, okay, your fourth house is in Terrace. Maybe your mama moved you around from school to school or something to learn things or something like that. No, I was in private, I was in private Catholic school. Really? So your moon was in Libra in the first house. In your first house. Wow. So it's a polarity of itself. That too. Oh my god. 
a Catholic school? Okay, well, your ninth house is in um, Taurus. God, I'm just trying to be fast over this or something. I think I'm recording. I'm not. Okay. What do you say about my mom? Because my mother was Miss Texas 1962, second row to Miss USA. This means she was very beautiful, and she made your vibes be beautiful, too. And um, you come off as being beautiful right away, kind of look like your mom, maybe, in the face. Uh, and a Virgo. Does she all kind of look like? And also, um... Yeah, my mom was very petite. My mom was a super petite Italian woman. I'm, a, I'm Italian, French, Irish. Also, you yeah, my father's French, Irish. I'm, I'm not half Italian, but I definitely look it's more Italian. Okay, your Lilith is in Libra, which means you would be proud of your own beauty and your own relationships. And it's in the second house. You're proud of your things that you have. Your, in your food... And it's in Libra, so your eyeball, the left eye, which is rule, rule of the second house. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, it's, that's right. Your left eye is ruled by Taurus, but it's in Libra, and it's in Lilith, okay? So that might be a different looking eye than the 12th house looks like a lion, a Leo. The 12th house is the right side of your face. It's the emotional side of your face that you don't want to show to everybody. You usually want to show people your left side of your face, and it, also your left side of face must be more beautiful, and you have a beautiful eye, but people don't want to see you look at them in this side of the face, but you do it anyways and become proud and beautiful, even if it's a shadow and a light self or something in a balance scale. You're, but you're secretly like a Pisces. You're secretly really actually sweet and probably wanting to be spiritual and delusional or something, but, you treat, you, but people are, a lot of Pisces are attracted to you for some reason. And um, you probably are a really good writer too, and you probably write can you write? Let me see something. Your Neptune is actually in Sagittarius in the third house. You might travel with writing or with your hands. You might write about spiritual stuff or you might write about the cult. You write some dark twisted things and about sex. And you also might write about like um, spiritual things or something. I don't know. When you travel, do you like to write when you travel or what? Do you write about traveling or some no, shit? I like, to, I like to read more than write. I used to write a lot when I was younger, but I like to read now. So you're like a learner. You want to learn things and explore, research or something. No, read, not run. Read. R E A. What do you What do you like to read? What do you like to read? I'm being stupid. Your Jupiter is in Sagittarius, and it is in the sixth house of day to day routines. Your Mercury is in there. No, it's I'm not. I'm a speed reader. I'm a speed reader, so I can go through a whole book in like two hours. So you're okay. Your third house is in Scorpio. You're your shit. That sounds really cool. I wonder where that gift is or your skill that's in your chart that says that means that, which is uh, your second house and 12th house probably. I don't know. You're proud of that, I guess. Your eyes, what they see, and being seen. Okay, um, your Mercury is in Sagittarius in the fucking 1B house. That is the fourth house of home. Okay, so you like socialize from home. What the fuck? You're multi-talented in the career. You use your hands in transportation. And you you speak a lot for in, your information. I guess I don't know. Yeah, that right. I'm an I'm a prosecuting attorney. Oh, and it's Scorpio and Libra is actually in your first house. Okay, your prosecuting attorney. Wow. Okay. Um, your Uranus is in the second house. So when you act weird, or or whatever, it makes you not look weird or awkward. It make you come off as just being normal when you act awkward and weird and stuff. Is that true? Like if you're being like an a rebellious person, you just look like you're normal and decent. Is that true? I'm kind of always rebellious, but I'm quiet. I sit and observe everything, but I don't miss a word. So you act like a quiet Libra or something. I don't know. You don't make it. Your 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 Saturn's in Gemini, which means your dad was a liar. Or a communicator, and he might have been. Uh, let's see, eighth, ninth house. He 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 is his not your ninth house in Taurus. He probably spoiled you with money, or taught you how to um, get your own money by lying or something, or talking storytelling, or talking and using your arms and hands. Okay, and, my my natural father, my parents are divorced. They they met in college, and my my stop and my brother were fourteen months apart, and then divorced shortly thereafter. And I had two stepfathers. My second stepfather was, they were my mother, they were married for 32 years. My mother died of COPD in April of 99. Oh, sad. Sorry, I don't know. I'm just looking at your chart. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Um, your ninth house is in Taurus. Uh, do you have any lung problems? 
Hopefully not. Or arm no. problem, hand problems, or what? Well, then that'd be good. What kind of problems? Arm problems or hand problems and lips problems. No. The point of your life is to get attention and be in the middle of it and to be like on the spotlight of fifth house and having parties and holidays as you're and expressing yourself and making everything right and equal, which is Aquarius in the fifth house, changing it up differently and being um, unique and a friend to everybody is your purpose, but you already learned how to be a Leo and a narcissist and you learned about getting all the under well, attention. Well, that right. A lot of people tell me I'm a narcissist because I'm, I'm set in my ways and I'm usually right about things, so mm -hmm. I make it known that I'm that way. But a lot of people call me a narcissist. That's the first time I heard that. And I'm a pretty handsome guy. Everybody tells me that. Yes, you look so very beautiful. Your rising sign, you might come off as intimidating and people might be scared of you, but they they want to tell you the truth and their secrets. And you just act like, um, you know, observe, uh, analytical. When they do this, you come off as that all the way. You have to analyze. That's how your head first thought is to people, is to analyze them and sum them up into a critical piece. Is, And you could be a very good writer, is what I'm just trying to say. But it's chaotic when you write and you have to move if you try to write anything fucking down. And communicating for you is the same way. Uh, chaos. Uh, right? And you might get in a car wreck and you spend too much money. And also, you you're, when you get mad, you have an explosive behavior because your Mars is in Aries and you're good at quickies. And also, you like to have sex fifth, sixth, seventh house with other people, the other people just, you're so, wait, wait, fuck, other people, yeah, Pisces, <laughs> I don't know, you have sex, um, with beautiful people, I guess, and <laughs> you put all your willpower into relationships and other people and what's fair and the people that you are so different from that you attract. And you have to be thinking about yourself when you're just in mints well, of other people. Now, we're total opposites. I think that's one reason why we were, were teased. He pursued me when I first met him, ironically. I really didn't like him. Mm. He's like, please go out with me. Just get to know me. You'll like me. So I went out with him for like three dates for dinner. I didn't have sex with him for like the first six months. Wow. Well, your eighth house is in Aries. And that means your sex, death, and transformation. And you just care about yourself and not other people sometimes or something in that way. Like, you have to just take care of yourself. So you'd rather be a single and mingle and that's it. And, like, your Venus is an acquire, so you'd rather be friends with somebody who is a narcissist too because it's in the fifth house of parties and holidays and uh, get-togethers and one-night stands. And yours is in Capricorn, which means part of your um, relationship with that is going to be your reputation. So... You, uh, what you keep secret the most is your Pluto in the first house, which is yourself. You keep yourself secret from people. You want to be, remain anonymous when you meet people right away. You try to keep secret or something like that. And your relationship secret. Is that true or false? I mean, who doesn't? You said what? You used to live by Obama three doors down. I doesn't live there anymore. It's a house. It's like a five million dollar home. I live in a high rise um, condo building. I'm on the fifth floor. Wow, groovy. So you lived by Obama, you say? Used to. He doesn't live there anymore. How long did they live there? What did you know about him when he did? And how long did he live there? Uh, well, I'm, I, I met Obama before. I, I, I met him before. I, I definitely met Michelle, and I, I met the Clintons as well. So especially Hillary Clinton. She'd be, I'd jog in the morning around the mall, uh, a rollerblade, and she was always out jogging without Secret Service, and she'd be in a little jogging suit, and she, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she's very personable. I have several pictures with her. She's a Scorpio. Things like that. I was disappointed with her, with, you know, with her and Trump. She could have been more aggressive, and she did, she wasn't. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not even up to them to decide anything anyways. It's up to the people who voted for him and all the fake votes. He hates Trump. We cannot wait to get rid of him. Mm. 
So I don't know what's going on, but whatever helps. I don't know anything about that TV show. <laughs> it's a TV show to me. It's none of my business because I can't do anything but vote. And I didn't get to, so I didn't have a ride that time. But, um, yeah, that's groovy. Obama and uh, is a Leo. And I think um, that other girl might be a Leo. Michelle Obama. I don't know. Her daughter's sign. But he's a Leo. Wasn't he cool and nice? Trump wants to blame everything on Obama because there's no coronavirus vaccine. Well, you dismantled the CDC in your first year in office. Mm -hmm. And then now we need them. They're not, they're not there. Well, um, he's a Gemini, Leo rising, moon and Sagittarius. That's all I know. I don't like any of those signs in me. I like people, though, <laughs> that might have that placement still. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm supposed to call you Moonlight? What is your real name? I won't tell anybody. Moonlight. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That's what you told me to call you. Your name was Moonlight. No, I said Moon Glow, but Moonlight? That's the same thing, I guess. Moon Glow. I'm gonna change it to Hello. I'm gonna change it to Moonlight. <laughs> yes. Moonlight bitch. Yes. <laughs> Funny. If you wanna do this, you can't be friends Boss with me. Because if she hates any other girl bitch. that comes in, she hates anybody that's like Critical that. All the way she wants to call us Well, okay, you you nappy headed, bow legged crack whore. Shut the fuck up. Yep, I agree. She's a demon dumbass bitch.